The DJI O3 system is pretty impressive and allows me to record 4K video in a whoop as small as this Pablo 20. But what if I wanted 4K video in even a smaller zoom like this tiny whoop right here? Well, that's not possible with the DJI O4 Air unit. So let's open this up and see how it looks. Okay, so here it is, the DJI O4 Air unit. And it's kind of weird that this small little box replaces this big old camera set up here in the O3. Well, not entirely. And that's because DJI has this weird name and nomenclature for their products. Think kind of like the DJI Goggles 2 versus V2. Kind of the same thing. So although this says DJI O4, it really isn't a replacement for this. Now, DJI is releasing two versions of their O4 transmission system, both as the original, which we call the Lite, as well as a larger model called the Pro model. And that one is the direct replacement for the O3 system. We'll talk about the Pro model in a future video. So let's open this up and see how this looks. And first thing I see here is the O4 air unit itself. Pretty impressive and a kind of static free package here or bag. Then we have a manual. And then last but not least, all we have is some silica gel. So that's to keep the moisture out of here. And we have a bag here. It looks like a bag with some hardware and some gummies. So this is obviously to install the board in your drones, which is cool that they have it. As well as the air unit itself and the camera. This thing looks really small and very, very light, guys. Now DJ said this thing weighs around 8.2 grams. So let's wait it and see if that is true and correct. Let's start this up and let's see how much it weighs. All right, 8.2, this one rounds up to nine grams. So that's pretty cool. Now that 8.2 gram is pretty impressive, guys. Now it's not the lightest on the market. We do have other VTX by HD0 as well as Walton. That's a little bit lighter than this. But when you consider this is actually a DJI system, this is really impressive overall. And a lot of guys are excited about this because you can fit these kind of boards into a smaller whoop just like this right here. Now let's take a closer look at this board here and there's a lot to dissect in this system here. The first thing I noticed is that there is no real heat sink on this. Um, so I'm interested to see how well this thing withstands the heat soak or if you're gonna fly this on a summer day. Right now it probably shouldn't be a problem because it's really cold outside. We have uh, winter conditions outside here. So this shouldn't be a problem, but I wanna see how resistant this is gonna be to some of the heat when you find this in the summertime. Now DJI has really good electronics and really good firmware and software on here. So that this thing will actually preserve itself, but we'll see if that is true. Now one of the first things I notice here is just the mounting solution on here. This is a 30 by 30 mounting solution. And as I said before, you do also have the gummies in here. So this should fit a multitude of drones on the market, guys. Uh, anything from a small whoop to a five inch quad, as long as you have the mounting solution here, pretty set. Now at first glance, this board here looks very bare bones, but trust me, there's a lot of features packed into this small board right here. Now the first thing I noticed is that there's no SD card slot similar to the one on the O3 Air unit, but they've got around that by actually including onboard storage. Now DJ has included 23 gigs of memory on here, so you can store your DVR onto this flash drive right here. Now talking about that, the one way to get your memory or information off the card is by this USB-C port. I'm really glad to see that they have a full USB-C port on here and no adapters required. And that allows you to flash the firmware on this board as well as to get the footage off this onboard memory. Pretty impressive. And I'm sure that was a big deciding or decision they had to make because having a smaller connection in here would save some weight. Now next to the USB-C port, you do have a plug or a harness right here. And this is the same harness that we've seen actually on the O3 Air unit. Now I'm glad to see that this is on here. Another decision they had to make as well, whether to put just solder pads on here or this plug on here. But this is a really good solution. I, I do glad that they went with this because this makes this really a plug and play system. And most modern flight controls have this little plug right here. You can plug it straight into the flight controller, requiring really no soldering at all. So that's really nice, especially for a board of this size. And I do suspect you'll see a lot of the smaller whoop boards now coming with this. DJI plug as well, so that's pretty cool. Now talking about supplying power to this O4 transmission system, this VTX here is rated between one and three as power source. Now I have to say that there's a disclaimer in there because this thing is actually rated between 3.7 volts to around 13.2 volts. So yes, it is one, two, three S batteries, but just remember 3.7 is a really high one S voltage, meaning once you plug your battery in around 4.2 volts, 
By the time you get to 3.7 volts, you're probably gonna have only maybe one or two minutes of flight time, and this thing is gonna power itself down once you get to around 3.7 volts. Just remember, we usually land our drones around 3.5 to around 3.0 volts. So you're not gonna get that extended flight time if you power on this thing off VBAT using a 1S battery. So we'll see. Now, having said that, most flight controls do have a BEC. Just make sure it has a powerful BEC. I would say it's somewhere around two amps, and then you probably wouldn't have any problem powering this up from a 1S drone or flight controller. Now on the side here, you have a UFL connector connected to this single mass antenna. And DJ said you can get around 10 kilometers of range with this setup. Now, people are assuming that this is around 700 milliwatts, but imagine flying a tiny whip like this, 10 kilometers? That's, that's crazy. Um, obviously that's not gonna happen since the battery's probably gonna die before you get to around 10 kilometers on a drone of this size. Now finally on the side here you have a button and this is the bind button to bind this to your goggles. Pretty cool, it's still kept that on here. Now last but not least we have a MIPI cable here connected to our camera. And this one here looks very similar to the one on the O3 air unit, but they're not interchangeable. The cool thing about this one here, especially on this light board here, is that it's at a 90 degree. So if you mount the board this way, then you have a straight shot to the front of the drone. Now that leads us to the camera here, which is arguably the star of the show here. Now this is a 4K camera. This one here is good for around 60 frames per second but you can also get higher frame rates if you do lower the resolution. So you can get around 120 frames per second at 1080p. Now this one here features a half inch sensor, which is pretty impressive for a drone of this size. This is similar to the camera on the DJI Neo drone here. So that one has pretty adequate image quality. Um, not the best, but for a, the application that it's made for, like these smaller drones, this is gonna be more than enough resolution here. Now besides that, this one here has a field of view around 117 degrees, which is not the widest. We know that the O3 area has 155 degrees field of view, as well as the Pro model. And I wish that this one did have that. Um, maybe someone can maybe make or manufacture an attachment to change the lens on here and give us a wider field of view, especially if you're gonna stabilize this in gyro flow, it's probably gonna crop in just a little bit more. So I wish we did have some more field of view on this one but overall, not, not bad. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how this thing looks. Now I just mentioned the stabilization of the image on this and that can be done in two ways. You can stabilize it internally with the Rocksteady 3.0 or you can take the gyro information from this board and put it into a stabilization software like Gyroflow. Typically I've had really good results with the onboard stabilization in O3 and I hope that continues in the O4 system as well. Now, if you want more customization, as I said before, you can put it into the Gyroflow stabilization system or software, and you can get better results that way. Now, one thing new for the DJ 04 air unit and camera is the introduction of race mode. And that's the process where DJ tries to give you a lower and more consistent latency going to your goggles. Now, with this system right here, the DJI air unit, the light version, DJ is getting somewhere around 23 milliseconds using the and three goggles, and something as low as 20 milliseconds using the goggles three. Now that's pretty cool, not too bad, and you can get even lower latency if you go to the pro model. So we'll see if that works out pretty well. But I want to know from you, are you buying the DJI 03 and 04 to race with? We'll see, DJI is also saying that you can also race or get four or eight aircraft in the air at one time with the race mode as well. So. We'll see if that's true or not. Now, last but not least, we need to talk about the dimensions of this camera here, at least the camera that came with this one right here. Hopefully there'll be other options in the future. But this thing here looks a little bit different than your standard FPV camera. Now, this is still a 14 millimeter camera, but it's just slightly a bit taller here. And I'm sure that's due to the larger sensor on this board right here. Now, the reason I bring this up is because this does have a different camera mount compared to your standard FPV camera. Now, typically, a typical camera would have a hole on each side of the camera mount, but they've gone over to a new system where you have two holes on each side. So this now is not compatible with existing drones in the market, including tiny loops like this right here. So I do suspect a lot of manufacturers will be 
making new drones or at least making new canopies to facilitate this new camera on here. So for the time being, I don't have any drones that can fit this, especially with these two holes. But sure enough, as I look on the website right now, I see other manufacturers, including Beta FPV, iFlight, GetRC, everyone's making new drones to accommodate this new camera, which is a bummer because it'd be very simple to just install this if it had the same mounting holes as the older cameras on the market, guys. Having said that, what's my plan for this O4 Air unit? Well, I could just put this into a smaller tiny like this right here or some of these Pava series of drones. I have the Pico, I also have the Pava 20 and the Pava 20 Pro. These will all be good candidates for this O4 Air unit. But I do suspect those manufacturers will make specific drones and canopies for this. So I probably won't do that right now. But I do have a drone coming in where I can fit this in and we'll talk about that in another video. So having said that, what do I think about the O4 Air unit? Well, I do think that DJ hit a home run with this packaging right here. There's a lot to like about this. For years, we've been asking for a DJI Lite or a 1-2-3 SV tick that's very lightweight and DJ has delivered that right here. This thing is super small, very compact and they seem to put a lot of this features on this board. There really isn't a lot of sacrifices compared to the O3 transmission system guys. And yes, the camera on here is a little bit probably going to be less quality compared to the one on the O3. But these cameras can be changed, guys. And this is just the smaller ladder camera for smaller whoops. So I do suspect other manufacturers will be making cameras in the future, at least other accessories. And I'm really eager to see that as well. Talking about that, the price point on this is pretty comparable to others on the market. This thing goes for around $100. All the other manufacturers, including HD Zero and Walkton, have price points around the same place, around $100, including the camera. And for DJI, we know that they have really good performance and the penetration and range. It's pretty affordable to go into the DJI system with this price point. I do suspect a lot of uh, new pals will choose this, as well as manufacturers choosing this system to make RTFs. That's what I'm really excited about. Um, you have companies like GetRC with the Tiny Go. That was a 4K analog drone. Imagine going from an analog drone like the Canix Loris to this DJI. 04 air unit, same price point, almost the same weight, and similar to better features than the Loris. So I am excited to see what manufacturers do with their upcoming uh, RTF kits in the future. So what do you think about the 04 transmission system? Is this impressive? Have you been waiting for this for a long time? Or are you gonna pick this up? And if you do, what are you gonna put this in? Are you gonna try to make one of those super lightweight drones? Or are you gonna put it into a, maybe a larger drone like one of these, these Pava 20s. These are pretty, a middle of the range drone. Very good performance, very fast. Still lightweight, under 250 grams. And it's gonna be even lighter with the 04. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. Now, if you're looking for a goggles to complement this very well, I do have one right here in the goggles N3. This is DJI's newest goggles. And this thing here is really affordable, coming around $229. I've done a full review on this one, and I'll leave a link right here so you can take a look at it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.